That's, yep. that's, I think, you know what? I can kind of get a sense of that. I'll have to, I'll have to start recommending that or use it myself next time. I'm <laughs> constipated. Yes, that's, the, how, that's how you can survive constipation during the holidays, folks. Thank you, Truth Raider. Is that, <laughs> is that, that's your tip for the day? That's the simple tip for the day, and I'll let you get oh. on to other callers. There Thank you. Good to talk support. to you, man. Happy holidays, Carl. You too. God bless. All right. God bless you too as well. Oh, let's go to Russia. Talk to my buddy, Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Welcome to the Bright Side, man. Hey, man. Um, I'm just curious. I have um, the uh, Dr. Group's Survival Shield uh, okay. nascent iodine. Yeah, I got yeah. the new one, the X2. Okay. Now, um, I'm 56, um, about 187 pounds, um, uh, about 5'11". What's the max? There's no max. Like, you don't have to worry about iodine, especially nascent yeah. iodine. Yeah. You know, no, you don't have to worry about it. There's no max on it, and there's no really way to know. You got, you just basically want to go by your symptoms. If you have symptoms, and if not, just do the regular standard dose. There's no really real way to know how much of these things, how much you need. Mm-hmm. The recommended daily allowance isn't going to help you. The best way to d- tell is if you have a health issue, and then to, you, if you start to see your health issue changes. I know with the nascent iodine, what I've been hearing, and I hear it a lot actually, is that people get energy from it. Have you, have you experienced? Yeah, that's what Absolutely. I hear the most. I was using. I was using the uh, original formula, the kelp-derived yeah. one, and yeah. it was pretty good results. And, you know, I heard uh, things on Alex Jones' show about uh, the X2, and I said, what the heck? I tried it, and definitely... Energy. It, definitely. You know the what other the... one is good. This one is definitely... Well then, here's here's what you want here's what you want to do, Kevin, if, in terms of assessing uh, in assessing the value of it or how much you need or dosing yourself, is go by the energy. And when you plateau, I call this functional dosing. You want to dose to the point where you plateau in your results, where your results just that you don't get any better, even if you take more. Does that make sense? How I explain it? So yeah, there's a dose. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So there's and you want to do that with things like probiotics and digestive enzymes and nutrients that you don't really know exactly how much to take essential fatty acids acids that we've been talking about. You want to kind of go by, by how you feel. If you have a skin problem or you have a health problem, that's even better because then you can see how it, how you, how it responds. But go by how you feel when you don't notice any, any increased benefits when you increase your dose. You know you have your, you know, stay at that dose. You'll know you have a good dose. That's called functional well, dosing, by the way. The only downside that I have is, um, you know, when I'm doing my running and uh, uh, really fast walking, and I do it on escalators, stairs, and such such as like this. Um, I feel it in my feet, you know, from uh, the pounding. But the energy, I'm I'm much faster than kids. And I, that's, I think that's I'm awesome. 56. That's awesome. Hey, while I while I got you here, I want to get the the Russian perspective uh, for the listeners. Kevin lives in in, sure. in Russia. You live in in Russia, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so what's the take on what's going on here with all the terrorism stuff and all, you know, the thing in San Bernardino? Do you guys hear about that? Yeah, of course I did. You know, I got my nose to the... Well, the from a Russian perspective, that. what are they saying um, over there? Well, they know who the enemy is, and they're really watched here. There's bad people everywhere, but uh, you know I'm from New York City, and right. you didn't know I'm from a police family. No, I didn't I know that. I criminals. And, you know, it's in my genes, but there's bad people, and I definitely feel safer here than back Interesting. home. Ah, that's very interesting. Okay, cool. All right, Kevin, happy holidays, man. Good to talk to you. Good to you. I'll be in touch, okay? Appreciate it. And have your friend call me. He hasn't called me yet. I, I just reached out to him. Okay, good. Did. Good deal. So, Thank um, you, Kevin. All right. Bye-bye. Thank, bye. Take care, man. Okay, I wanted to, I got a call or a text message yesterday from my friend Tammy, and I thought it was kind of interesting, and it's been something I've been meaning to talk about here. She says, uh, she says in her text message that she has a friend who has a condition called uh, uh, alopecia universalis. That's when your hair falls out, basically. And she wants to know the, what she can do to treat it. It's not for her, it's for a friend of hers. Uh, what to, to treat it. And the reason I think this is important is because we get confused by symptoms and we confuse them with our disease, or with our health issues. Our health issues are not our symptoms. And you can't take care of a symptom without taking care of the health issues issue. And this is so, so important for folks who are dealing with heart disease or Alzheimer's disease or degenerative disease or autoimmune disease to understand the distinction between a symptom and a health challenge. 
God takes care of the symptoms. We got to participate in taking care of the health challenge. So if you have something like for my friend Tammy, if you ha- uh, she has a customer who has AU, alopecia universalis, that doesn't happen in a healthy body. That happens in a body that's majorly stressed out. To the body, the hair doesn't matter. To the body, the hair is secondary. Somebody called me up yesterday asked me about gray hair. Wanted to know why my hair is gray. I said, gray hair is the first thing that goes. Why? Because the hair doesn't matter to the body, relatively speaking anyway. So it will pull the resources out from the external part of the body. So for alopecia issues, baldness issues, gray hair issues, etc., you want to consider that to be the signs of a body in distress. And our job is to find out where that distress is coming from. It's like if you have a baby. If your baby's crying, you want to figure out what's causing the distress. And it's as simple as that. Don't be bamboozled by this idea that you got to take care of your hypertension and your osteoporosis and your alopecia universalis and all these symptoms. God will take care of those. The divine force will take care of those. The body, nature will take care of those. We got to take care of whatever is stressing the body out. That includes nutrition. It's always the same things. Nutritional deficiencies, hypoxia, lack of oxygen, accumulation of toxicity, including sugar. You guys, it's as simple as that. Now, there's mental and emotional strategies and spiritual issues. Of course, those are invo- uh, need to be addressed as well. But physiologically, nutrition, food, diet, digestive system, uh, toxicity, including sugar and a hypoxia or making sure you're breathing correctly, practicing your slow, deep breathing, and then moving the body also is important. And then just kick back. That's how simple it is, you guys. All right, 844-236-6010. Angela in Florida, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Hi, Ben. How are you? Hey, good. Doing good. What's going on? Good. I have a question related to gluten and wheat. Yes. I'm trying to, I, it's really also about my blood, and I'm feeling like wheat is possibly causing some issues with my blood or polluting it. Okay. I just want to know, um, regarding me having like a abnormal or high bilirubin, is there a way to kind of test if the gluten or the wheat is causing yes. Yes. problems yes. with my Yes, yes, yes. Bilirubin, yes. Angela, bilirubin, for the listeners, bilirubin involves liver health. Uh, elevated bilirubin involves, uh, th- there's a liver problem going on. You can assume that gluten is connected. You can stop eating the gluten for a couple of months and watch what happens. There may be other things, so you may not notice dramatic results. But you can assume that gluten will throw off liver health, and that will affect Billy Rubin. It's an assumption you can just make. Okay, I got to move. That's the end of the. That's the end of the program, Angela. I apologize. If you want to call back tomorrow, we'll get you first up. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You've been listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. If you're interested in checking out my Truth Treatment products, please go to TruthTreatments.com. TruthTreatments.com. Have yourselves an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now. 